How smooth is that? So if you guys haven't seen my other videos on this excavator bucket wood stove, you should check them out. There's a couple more build videos before this that got us to this point. Before we get started with this video, we need your guys' opinion on what we should do as far as painting it, not painting it, while you're wheeling it, leaving it like this. We're not really sure. We're kind of going back and forth. We could, we could paint it like a, a heat resistant paint like this stove is just black. Or we were kind of thinking maybe like a equipment yellow, John Deere Caterpillar yellow, normal paint, uh, the whole thing, and then lighting a hot fire outside and maybe letting it burn off where it's gonna burn off. So it might give it a cool patina look. Like you can see there's some yellow of original paint still on it. Or we could do some yellow, some black. I don't, I'm not sure. So let, it, let us know in the comments what you guys think we should do. Or we should just leave it raw, wire wheel it or something. So since the last video, I got this whole front plate welded up completely. Sealed up nice. I did this, the weld on this other plate, smoothed that out. Still needs a little work, so do these holes, making that transition nicer. But the plate's all welded up. Uh, we did get some fire brick in here. A couple people were concerned about that blower getting too hot on the bottom. So we got two inch thick fire brick in there. And after a couple fires, the ashes will fall in the cracks and stuff. Ash is a really good insulator. And I'm not sure, I don't think I explained the teeth situation in any other videos. So when we got this bucket, this bucket had, it didn't have any actual teeth on it. It just had the little nubbins sticking out. And somebody welded like a cutting edge on it for grading. So we didn't want to leave those. Those were pretty ugly. Um, and we were looking for teeth and my buddy actually found some used teeth for free. They actually don't seem that used to me, but they were free. So, and they're not the right size. For, they weren't the right size for this bucket for the little nubbins. So we tried making it work, grinding off and gouging the nubbins for this to fit on how it's supposed to. But it was just a, it was a lot of work and we, it, we ended up whittling it down so much we figured we just cut them off. So we're gonna weld these on there. Give it a cooler look. We got three of those regular ones and then those different style there. We'll probably put those on the outside. So I'm gonna get those welded on. Uh, we're gonna get the door gasket on. Got another piece of glass. We're gonna get the glass on. Hopefully not break it this time. And then we're gonna start working on a silly damper lever system. So we got this wrench and the plan is to make some kind of mechanism We'll have a rod coming back here with some other levers. And then this is the primary air intake, this hole and that hole. So with that lever, we got to make uh, some kind of actuator to move it around this corner and then some kind of slides to give it more air or less air. So that's going to be a little challenge. We got that left to do and then We'll get the door on and then I still got to figure out the air wash coming from the secondary burn tubes. That should be it. It's getting closer. So let's get after it. So we're getting ready to put the gasket on the door. And Andrew actually read the instructions. So he's <laughs> wetting the surface first, it says. This gasket cement. It's a few years old. Yeah, hopefully it's still good. Is it expired? Uh, Maybe. You know. Oh, it's coming out the wrong end. 
<laughs> you gotta apply it from that end now. Okay, where's your stupid? It's right in the corner. Sorry about your work. Bunch. Oh, that's oh, way that's easier. That's nice. Do you think it's supposed to be that runny? It's like frosting. Nobody needs to use those tips anyway. I guess I'm just gonna do one of these. You're actually wearing gloves, huh? Yeah, it's... We should have it cut close enough or we'll get all the way around. It'll be an inch short. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of stretch it out. And then we're gonna put it in the stove. Ooh, ooh, look at it, juicy. That's probably good. That's that was too much water. Too wet. <laughs> we're gonna apply, apply some water. How much water? <laughs> we're gonna put it in the stove and then close it and let it set up so it compresses nice. Ooh. Oh, look at that! Perfect. We're a little long. Story again. I put the seam here. Because it's the hinge side, so it's the less, you know, busy than this side's going to be getting a lot of opening and closing. Literally, this isn't going to move much, and I figured it'd be better to put it in the middle than a corner mm -hmm. for leakage reasons. Mm. Action. How do we look? This corner keeps falling. Clampage. Oh, it's tight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Too tight. Uh-oh. We got major issues. Just jam it in there. It can't. Jam it. We didn't leave enough room with the hinges. Drive it home. <laughs> close it. <laughs> you can close it. Come on, no, push on it. Close it. Push on it. <laughs> so we got it closed. That, you can't burn that. It, it We had really tight tolerance. We should, probably should have left a little more when we tacked the hinges on. But we got it closed. We're going to let it set up. It's really nice and tight, so. Oh, it's tight. Yeah, we'll <laughs> let it set up, and hopefully it, it, it'll, as you open and close it, it'll work itself tighter over time, too. I think we're going to put these weird-looking ones on the outside. I wonder what these ones are, why these ones are different, what the benefit of that is. So I'm going to start working on the damper system. It's going to take some prototyping, but I cut this boomerang out. And I'm going to make some little tabs and weld it somewhere around here. So that this is going to pivot. And then on this end, I'm going to have some heim joints connecting to this wrench lever. So when that wrench lever turns, this is going to turn. And then I got to transfer that rod over here somehow and make some doors.
fine thread nut, so I'm just using this for now. I got this rod connected. You can see how it's gonna work. I gotta put a little stop back there because if you throw it too far, it goes past the center and you can't do it. So I gotta weld a little stop on there somewhere. But I think it'll have enough throw depending on what I do back there. This, again, this, I don't have a, uh, fine thread nut, so I'm using that as my nut, so it'll go a little bit further. That won't be sticking out. And then this is just temporary too. We gotta get a, I think that's a one inch carriage bolt we're gonna put through there and then figure out a bushing or something for the that end of the wrench to pivot better. So this, this turns this obviously, and now I gotta figure out a rod coming to here and we're kind of thinking something in the center that that spins like this and then opens like two chute doors for these uh for this air intake all right so now for back here i got this piece cut and i think i'm gonna weld this bolt to there and then there'll be a rod connected to this and that swivels with a rod going this way and that way and then i'll make these like sliding shoot doors we'll see if that works
mobile vehicle. <laughs> that is nice. So we got all that tacked in. It's definitely completely unnecessary and excessive, but it definitely looks cool. And it's gonna do the job. So that's gonna control our air intake to damper down the fire. Primary air. The primary air. So we kind of ran out of heim joint ends, so we got these goofier ones kind of tempt in there. We don't have any fine thread nut fine thread nuts either. So we gotta get I think two more of those. Yeah. So we don't have the this oh, main rod connected. It's a goofy one down there too. Yeah. Because we had a steel on to make this work. So once we get some more hind joints it'll all be together. Is that going to cushion the blow? I hope so. One could only hope. So we're putting the second piece of glass on. <laughs> I think we I think we got it down this time. We uh we ended up drilling different holes, cutting out around the frame there a little bit and drilling holes square to the frame instead of on an angle like we tried originally. Then we made these little tabs. Seems to be holding pretty good. And we have, what, six of them? Oh yeah. Mm, not bad. Ooh, that was nice. It didn't even crack. Oh yeah. Got a good seal all the way around. I think that's gonna work. So there's no metal on the glass. It's just on those little tabs and then we put a piece of fire rope in between. We'll close that again. Listen to that. It's our latch. Listen to that. Oh, that's oh, nice. That is nice. So now that we got the glass on the door, I'm gonna start working on the air wash system. And if you don't know what an air wash is, the air wash system takes in air from somewhere else other than the primary air down below, and it, it draws in air from another location and then comes out the top of the glass and directs it down in front of the glass burning off the gases that are in front of the glass and it keeps the glass a lot cleaner. So in my case, sometimes the air wash is sucking in from a separate location other than like the secondary burn tubes. But in my case, I'm just gonna tie into that same secondary burn chamber. That's what I did on my other stove and it seemed to work good. So I gotta cut a hole. This tube is connected to that whole secondary burn system. So I'm gonna cut a slot in this tube in here and weld something on like this, angled towards the door, towards the glass, to help direct it in front of the glass. So this would have been a lot easier job if I did this before I put that secondary burn 
stuff in, but I didn't know exactly where our door was gonna be and where the glass was gonna be. So I waited until we got that done. But you can see now I cut that slot in there and that tube is all tied in and sucks in air back there. And then I didn't have a wide enough piece of flat bar. So I just pounded the piss out of this angle. And then I'm gonna weld this in on like a 45 so that uh, it directs, directs all that air um, down in front of the glass. I got this angle in there, or bent angle. It's a little crappy. I, my nozzle wouldn't fit in there all the way, but I think I got it sealed. And then I just filled in those corners with weld. And I did stick my big head in there and get some weld on the back side, so it shouldn't go anywhere. So to show you, when the door's closed, you can see that angle is pointed towards the glass and it should suck in draft air and wash it in front of the glass. I might need to, I don't know if you can see, it's still probably like three quarters of an inch away from the glass. And the closer you are to the glass, the better off you are because if there's a big gap here, it's it right when the air comes out of here, it's gonna wanna suck to the fire because the air needs fire to burn so it's going to want to go right to the fire so the closer you are to the glass it's going to it's going to come down more and then go to the fire so i might we'll see how it works but i might have to add a little half inch strip across there so that it is closer to the glass but we're going to see how that works so that's going to do it for this video I got a little more welding to do. I'm gonna finish welding the teeth and then put some more weld on these blower tubes, grind, clean them up some more. Door's done, air wash is done, damper system's done. This is gonna be closed and that's gonna be open. That's all done. A little more welding to do on these two back here, touch up stuff. So that's pretty much it, except for we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do for painting it or just wire wheeling it and leaving it with the kind of rusty look. So in the next video, we're gonna be moving this to my buddy's house to his barn. It's not ready to be installed yet, but we'll be moving it over there and probably doing like a test fire outside. So that'll be interesting because this thing's, I'm guessing this is weighing around 2,500 pounds, 2,000 to 2,500 maybe. So I'd like to weigh it. It'd be interesting to know, but it's definitely got some weight. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. It'll be interesting.